Winter has come when I return to Belgrade. Everyone is sick of winter except for she and I. The cold is colder than before. I've longed for it. I've been longing. Belgrade in winter holds a beauty intense. Dead swans float in frozen rivers. Tishma, old soul from lost days, tells us poetry is like a frozen swan. Snowstorms cover the statues of the city, the statues that I learned to read, the statues that I show the others. People heat each other in smoky bars and beds. I return to the city, I return to her, and everyone I know is trying to set themselves free from desire, love, expectations, jealousy, responsibility, debt, insecurity, loneliness, and pain. Belgrade is desperate and magnificent like that. Dogs follow us onto buses. Lovers exchange diseases. My lover doesn't read my pleasure. My lover is a sailor, and I'm the last to say goodbye before he leaves for sea. I enter the coffee shop and a diabetic girl lies sprawled across the table, a needle in her arm. A little boy across the road plays with a red ball, the color of our hibiscus flowers, which every morning open and every night close and drop to the floor. Belgrade is a smell of thunderstorms, cigarette smoke, and first snow. Azal lights a cigarette and asks me if I agree that Bukowski should be banned from university reading lists because he was a misogynist who treated women like dirt. And I, loving Hazal's fierce female strength and endless energy to fight and love, simply don't agree. And I say maybe he was a misogynist pig, but his writing is real and should be free to be read. Imagining the empty, one-sided universities of the angry and the scared, I think it all got terribly lost. And we'll have to go to one extreme again before balance can return. It's Hazal's last Belgrade night, and we go say goodbye to our Istanbul friends and walk back to her place hand in hand. Hazal is a little queen, soft as curls against my skin, and falling worshipping to sleep, her sweet salt stays still on my tongue. In the morning, I walk to Kalanić so slow, where Dragic takes me in these days before my move to Dorto. And as I pass through the market, I fail to notice in my Hazal haze the subtle hands that lift my wallet. So I start completely fresh. And the first story I read that first night in my new apartment is Bukowski's The Most Beautiful Woman in Town, homage to Hazal. Bukowski really loved this Cass, the ugliest guy and the prettiest girl, trying to destroy her own beauty. I think to myself as I fall asleep alone, waiting to finally feel at home again, and thinking how often beauty is a curse. Is your flat still very far away, sir? I'm cold in this broken night and it is hard to walk while I shiver. We need something so we do not feel anything at all. These pains should be scraped out somehow. Maybe if the world would cut a hole in me and pull everything out. Maybe if this body could be emptied out, turned out of itself, the soul would also finally come out too. Sometimes I stand around at the station looking at the smiling women, as they laugh, walk, talk in their pretty dresses, and then I think that maybe one day they will be lined up, all of them stripped naked, and who knows what they will do to them before their execution. Sometimes all I can see is disrupted bodies everywhere, and I am trying to find the spot where hope cracks, where death will step in and be stuck between the days. There is not enough beauty, not enough reality, for me to let go of the dreams, sir. I often keep my eyes shut all day, everything is easier that way. Because everything keeps washing, pulling and whipping us, just like the sea, you have to stand with empty hands and let it be, so we get used to the punches. Because we slowly get used to everything, that's how simple people are. The sea, sir, the sea, we are slowly eroded by the sea, we just have to dangle our legs and arms in the water, and the salt will slowly burn up everything it needs. Salt has it easy. 
It paints the body white when removed from the water, sparks in the sunlight, and splits. That's how I soaked my father in the sea. But I dipped him in the water for nothing. He didn't get smaller. His shadow didn't fade. He just stood there, straight as an arrow, immersed in the water, and waited for me to look into his eyes and get used to him being dead. He was waiting for my gaze to find his eyes and finally unleash himself from me. <laughs>